This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to the Tisch WNET studios right here in beautiful Lincoln Center. I want to introduce you to a gentleman who is the director of a uh, really an extraordinary documentary. It is called Koch, um, the life and times of uh, the irrepressible mayor yeah. of New York City, Ed Koch. He is uh, Neil Barsky. It is an honor to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, I don't often get the chance to see the entire film of, of someone who we have come in mm -hmm. who put it together, but I was able to do it last night, and I will tell you that um, I was blown away. It was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It was special. And um, congratulations to you and your colleagues. Thank you. That's great. Really nice to hear. Um, I don't know where to start other than I'll take this shot. How long did it take you to put this documentary together? Well, from soup to nuts, I'd say I first met with him in the spring of 2010. Approached him to do the documentary. Uh, we started shooting in September 2010. Probably shot through the middle of 11. And the biggest, uh, the thing that took the longest was editing. And that took over a year. So we basically locked picture in July, August of 2012. And the rest has been distribution. So interesting, the film goes back and forth. It, 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 uh, I'm not going to give away too much. But it, it strikes me that it starts in a way where there's Koch today. Well, it's interesting how Koch dies <coughs> the day the film comes out yeah. at 88, which is a whole other story. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to all the way in the beginning, and you see him toward the end mm -hmm. of his life. Let's, instead of me talking about it, because I'm all caught up mm -hmm. after watching it, let's take a look okay. at the clip, and we'll have Neil talk about it. Sure. Koch. <laughs> In 1977, the city was on the verge of bankruptcy. Businesses were leaving, families were leaving, anybody who could leave would. Good morning, I'm Ed Koch and I'm running for mayor and I need your help. How am I doing? Here was a guy who really represented the rough and tumble of New York. And he was just haunted and damned by one hell of a personality. Shut up, will you, and let me I talk to these people? I knew that of all those who were running, I knew more than they did. We want the there was a sense of momentum building. At the same time, so did the rumors. There were signs in all the trains. Vote for Cuomo, not the homo. Why have you never married? Well, I've always thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to be married in Gracie Main Street? <laughs> You have to get the attention of the public. You gotta get them to follow you. And you can only do that by being bigger than life. I, I got it real quick. There's so many yeah. pieces in that. Yeah. Um, there's a scene where Koch is asked about his sexuality. You see him there with Bess Myerson, 1977 race to set the scene. Uh, Mayor Koch is running fourth, if you will, in a five-person race for the Democratic uh, nomination for mayor. Uh, Herman Badillo is running. Uh, Percy Sutton is running. Uh, all kinds of people. Bell Abzug, AB. Bell Abzug, Bell of the Hat, right? Very colorful race. Okay. He's not the odds on favorite. No. Something happens in the race where all of a blackout. sudden, yes, the blackout, yeah. he steps up, he's got a shot. But his sexuality becomes an issue. All of a sudden, Bess Meyerson, mm -hmm. former Miss America, mm -hmm. right at his side, right. holding hands. Right. But it's not real because obviously his sexuality is an issue. This is a critical part of his biography. Um, he consistently said it's nobody's business, and in some level, he's right, it wasn't. But uh, starting with 77, even probably before when he was running for assembly, he was hounded by rumors. He was a single bachelor living in the Greenwich Village that he was gay. And uh, in those days, you could be gay, and you could be mayor, but you really couldn't be both. And, even uh, in New York City. Even in New York, 1977. Right. Very different times. In fact, Cuomo was running on with his family. He couldn't take a picture with his dad's family, reminding people he had a family. And so there was a lot of bad blood starting to be generated between Koch and Cuomo. And let's remind people that in the 1977 race, there were posters that appeared. Mm -hmm. And we've interviewed Governor Cuomo, and I have asked him about this. Mm -hmm. and Andrew Cuomo was the king, a very young campaign manager for mm -hmm. his father, um, mm -hmm. uh, Mario Cuomo, in that race. And in that race, there were signs, signs that said, vote, vote for, for Cuomo, Cuomo not, not the homo. Not the homo. Not the homo. So, Koch never really forgave the Cuomos for this. And the Cuomos say they had nothing to do with it. And the it. Cuomos say they have nothing to do with it. And there's a lot of evidence for both sides. And, but they're pretty, the Koch was pretty convinced that they had a lot to do with it. So Bess Meyerson is holding hands with yeah. uh, Koch. Uh, it helps. Completely blunted any rumors and gossip. She was an iconic figure, Jewish Miss America. You see the love over there between and Cuomo and And she was beautiful. Koch. And um, they said, and Koch said during the campaign, she is the first lady. He, he put fire on the rumors, no question. Later on in life, uh, Koch is asked by you guys, I think, um, to talk to us about his, they say, talk to us about your sexuality. Uh, some say you owe it to share about your sexuality. And he oh. says, quote, it's none of, I'll tell you what I've said before when I've mm -hmm. been asked. It's none of your effing business. Yeah. 
Well, this was in context. We didn't, we didn't say he owed it to anybody. This was, we just asked him whether he was tempted. In the wake of the AIDS crisis, for example, which is a there was a lot of, of the film. a huge part of the film where he was under a lot of pressure from AIDS activists for not doing enough or fast enough. Uh, the perception that he was gay, particularly in the gay community, exacerbated their feelings. They felt probably doubly angry at Koch because they felt he really could have been a leader. And so we asked him, did you ever feel tempted to use your platform? And then he said, mm -mm, not going there, it's none of your business. But today, I'd say the greatest animosity toward Koch would probably, and this is a generalization a little, but would be in the gay community in the wake of the AIDS crisis. But when he was mayor, his largest confrontations and his worst relationship was actually with the African-American community. Let's talk about Those it. Those bridges, uh, he's built bridges with them, but not as much with the AIDS uh, activists. The black community, the animosity toward Ed Koch, and you got Koch to agree to to do the documentary, and I wonder to the degree to which he understood how fair you guys would be and how much of a visceral negative reaction you would get from many in the black community, how much historical footage you had. Um, Sidenham? Yes. The set up the Sidenham sure. hospital piece because when he was running for mayor, he got a lot of support up in Harlem and other African American communi communities inside mm -hmm. Sidenham Hospital, a key part of the African-American community, he promised to keep it open. Exactly, that was if almost a quid pro quo to get their endorsement. He becomes mayor and he says, I'm closing it. Yes. Well, this was the beginning of really his worst relationship and I think the thing that marred his legacy the most. It wasn't so much that he closed the hospital. He could have closed the hospital for budgetary reasons saying, we'll replace it and medical care in Harlem is very important to me. But he was a fighter, so you push him, he pushes back. And for the next 12 years, whether it was Jesse Jackson or, you know, the- Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton, uh, he gave as good as he got, and which is fine when you're fighting with Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson, but he was the mayor of the city. And there was an impression and, and a perception that he, didn't, he had written off that community. And we were very racially stressed city in those days. And I, even when I started, I said to him, uh, I don't know where we're gonna come out on certain issues, but my prejudice, is that this is where you fell short. And I'd say he did great things for the city, but I'd say uh, I still think that was uh, the worst element of his, of his mayoralty. How can people get the documentary? Uh, it's still showing in Manhattan. It's showing through the metropolitan area in piecemeal. Our, our website is www.kochthemovie.com, and it'll show you where it's, it's playing. It's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's playing in some theaters in Jersey and Westchester and Long Island. Now, Koch dies the day it comes out. Did yeah. Koch actually see the film? Oh, yeah. Did you talk to him after? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was his reaction to that particular part of the film? The race? The race Racial? piece. And the, the crap that he took from many, many black leaders who said that either he was a racist or he was the closest thing possible to racist and could no longer heal yeah. and be the facilitator to bring blacks and whites together. Um, I would say he liked the film a lot. He was very supportive of the film. He gave interviews, but I, th I know that he felt that we were too harsh with respect to his treatment of Sydenham Hospital and race. Um, I felt we were pretty balanced, actually, because I do think that was why he didn't get reelected in the fourth term. If you remember, there's a death of a, of a boy in a white neighborhood Yousef in Brooklyn, Hawkins. Yousef Hawkins, and that sort of uh, crystallized all the racial the gap that existed yes. in the city, and uh, he did not rise to that occasion. So I think that we dealt with it fine, but he didn't, he, in fairness, he felt we were too harsh. Let's talk about the Cuomo-Koch uh, connection. Mm -hmm. There's a fascinating scene in the uh, movie where Andrew Cuomo is elected governor uh, in November 2010. Mm -hmm. Koch at the time, I believe, is 86. Yes. And he's moving around as the elder statesman. Mm -hmm. He's in a hotel, I believe, mm -hmm. right here in Manhattan. Sheridan. He's at the Sheridan, yes. and he's going around, um, and he wants to just simply congratulate Andrew Cuomo. Uh, and there was a history there, remember. Right. They had never really healed the rift between Andrew Cuomo, Mario Cuomo, and Ed Koch. There, there's some stuff. Yes, well, right? actually, interestingly, Mario Cuomo personally asked Ed Koch to endorse Andrew, and Koch agreed. And we have a scene where he's endorsing him, and it's a little stiff between Andrew and Ed because of all their history. I think he felt he put out. And yes. I also, frankly, he had an ego. And uh, for whatever reason, either because of a miscommunication or a snub, Andrew didn't see him before he went up. Uh, he calls Andrew an epithet on camera. Um, Why and, can't you say that word? Oh, he called him a schmuck. It's he your, called him a schmuck right there. Schmuck. And he knew he was on camera. Definitely. And he knew he was mic'd. His back was to the camera, interestingly, but he knew he was mic'd. He was a very practiced uh, guy in front of a camera or with a film crew. So he knew what he was doing, sure. Uh, on the... Uh, it's interesting on the AIDS issue. Mm -hmm. A lot of criticism, from, not just from Larry Kramer as an AIDS activist, but mm -hmm. other AIDS activists. I mean, 
thousands of, 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 of gay men were dying. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that Koch could have, should have needed to do more. Mm -hmm. And then he said, what? What do you want from me? I put, he goes, we closed down the bathhouses and we put condoms right. in places where men were having very specific open uh, sex. Yes, yes. But he never really talked about an AIDS policy. Exactly. He never said this was a high priority. He said, what else do they want from me? What did I, they want from them? I think you hit on the nose. I think if you looked at what the city did and the money it spent, it was slow, but it caught up. Yeah. But he never provided leadership. He never, all he had to do was, was get up and say, this is the worst human crisis of our lifetimes in New York, and it's a tragedy, and we have to do everything in our power to heal the sick or whatever. But he, that wasn't him. He wasn't able, in that respect, to admit empathy for people. And he, or his mistakes. Well, Not yeah. Not many in the film. Uh, correct. He, he said he was wrong to close Hyde Sydenham, but then he, he, had he it. said he was. He yeah. said it was wrong to close Sydenham. I should have been weak, right. like the mayors before me who said they were going to close Sydenham, right. and then capitulated right. because they were weak and, and caved into the black community. Meaning, Absolutely. he said I was wrong, but but dot, dot, dot. no question. But he his problem wasn't yeah. his policies. I think he had amazing people working under him, and I think he had the right instincts of what the city should do. <laughs> but from time to time, when leadership empathy was, was called for, he wasn't really able to do that. That other, wasn't him. Sorry for interrupting. I'm too, too caught up in watching cool. this movie. Um, you like the movie, you can interrupt me all you like. Here's the thing. Uh, there's another piece about the, his religion. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful scene that you, you, you want, I'm not going to give away too much, where he, Koch goes to the cemetery where he... Uh, Crazy. I lost it in this... Uh, so... There it is. There's his plot. And Koch is a proud Jew. Yes. He makes no mistake of it. He goes to synagogue once a year for High Holy uh, Day services. And yet he learns that he can be buried in Trinity Cemetery, which is in Washington Heights, which is the only place in Manhattan you can still be buried, actually mostly interred. It's a Protestant cemetery. He says, I don't care. I want to be buried there. I want it to be a subway stop. I want a bustling cemetery. And so a little bizarrely, not only does he buy a plot, he puts down his headstone and he puts down his epitaph, which he writes. He writes it. And we visit the plot with his friend Diane Coffey, and he reads from the stone. It's very weird. Um, uh, the irony is that you have a Jewish guy buried in a Protestant cemetery. Probably the house of worship he was most comfortable and was in most was St. Patrick's Cathedral. Wow. He went and he to was the close to the Catholic diocese here in yeah. New York. Yeah. Colonel O'Connor was a close friend. He went to Midnight Mass every year. Uh, he had a lot of empathy and, and uh, uh, an excellent relationship with the Catholic community. Final question. We should have done the whole half hour on this, sorry. Um, my call, my mistake. Koch was alone. He had a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And there's a great bunch of scenes with him and his uh, friends where Koch was doing most of the talking. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely right. And they loved him and they cared for him. But Koch would go back to his rent-controlled apartment and Koch would make his own coffee and his breakfast and read the paper and write. Mm -hmm. um, but he would go home alone. And I found it very sad. You found it sad. I found it a little sad. I don't think he'd find it sad. I, I think to the end of his days, he loved being Ed Koch. And he made a choice, I think. He made a choice, consciously or unconsciously, to have a life of celebrity, but not have a lifetime companion. And I, I think to the end of his days, he loved being Ed Koch. And that was a choice he made. And I think it was a choice he was comfortable with but I agree with you. There was something sad and, and lonely about it. But did, did, was he married in his mind to this city? That sounds like such a cl he's married corny to. Cliche. I think he's married to. Was married to. Yes, the the celebrity. You know, he. How did we get? How does he get love? I, he walks down the street. He gets love. People recognized him. People approached him, and he derived. Joyce Pernick from the Times mentions this in our interview. Like he he got great energy from that. So yeah. very different bird. Neil Barsky, director of uh, a, a wonderful documentary called Koch. Uh, again, on behalf of everyone in the world of public television, um, congratulations. Thank you very much. Job well done. Appreciate it. All the best. Really. Stay with us. We'll be right back here from uh, Lincoln Center. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Meridian Health, Wells Fargo, Qualcare Inc., NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Cone Resnick, NJ Best, Berkeley College, 
and by Verizon Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.